tad bit different. Um, we're going to dive again into the word from this past week that our pastor has taught. Um, and so I'm going to be coming in and out and just sharing some of my thoughts. And so you guys can do the same. Go ahead and just comment below and share some of your thoughts. Also share this with your friends because this is an awesome word that is about to come forth as pastor will be talking about sight. He will be talking about spirit and he will be talking about seed. So I don't want to waste no more of you guys' time. So let's just dive right on into this word and just have your hearts open and prepared and ready to receive the word that is about to come forth. So let's go ahead and check out the first point of sight. Then on I went on and I talked about sight. And sight is a very important part of the alliteration because um, we open up with the scripture, 2 Corinthians 5 and 7 and the Amplified and says, for we walk by faith, not by sight living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So we are supposed to walk by faith, not by sight. This word sight, um, it's talking about sight optically from what you can actually see. Um, and then let me just hurry up and get ahead of myself. And when we go into Matthew, you'll see, because they'll hear me say it again. In Matthew chapter, I believe it's 13, um, it talks about our hearing. And so what we're getting to is that our hearing and our seeing, um, we can hear from our ears, we can see from our eyes, but we're not supposed to walk by that. We are supposed to walk by faith. So the question comes that if we are to walk by faith, how do you do that? Well, as we've been talking about what God has given us, God has given us the ability to see from our heart. And that's ability he has given us. Um, the Bible says he has given us many things. And so God gave us sight and God gave us hearing from our heart. And so if he says we can do it, then we can do it. Um, I did this, uh, with, I do this all the time. Um, and, and people always mess it up, but even I'll do it even here. And I said, just to, to prove to you that there is a voice going on on the inside. I, I do this often. I say, if you just close your mouth, don't open up your mouth, don't say a word, right? And what I want you to do is count to five, but I don't want your lips to open. And I want you to almost scream loud on the inside, but don't open up your mouth. Ready? One, two, three, count to five. Did somebody in your house start screaming one through five? Every time we in church, somebody comes up and they, and they come up and they start counting aloud. Here's the question. Did you hear something in there? Yeah. You know why? Because there's a voice on the inside. You can hear inside there. There's, there's hearing that's going on and God has given us the ability to hear on the inside. So we, we're, not just, we're not just to where we only hear on the outside but we can hear on the inside. We can see on the inside. We don't just have to see from here. So he says, he says, don't walk by sight, but walk by faith. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Faith is the, is the substance. It's not made up yet, but the things are coming together to make up what I'm believing for. And I have a hope. What is the hope? of what I see on the inside. What I see on the inside will soon materialize on the outside. And so how do you think inventors make something? They see something, no one else gets it, then they create it from what was in, then it comes out. Don't you understand that? that that's pretty clear, right? And so revelation of giving depends on our sight. So if I'm asking a person to give, then it's very difficult if a person can't see clear to that because they see more of what their bills say than, than they do of the promises of God. And I get that. That, that makes total sense. And all I'm, I'm trying to give to you is that there's a way that you can come out of being a slave to your bills and being free in Christ as it relates to giving. Because So God says this. He says, bring your tithe and your offering to the storehouse. Well, why does he say do that? So there may be meat in my house. This is specifically talking about 
that word is in the house of God, that the people of God is taking care of the house of God so that a word can come out of the house for the people, that people may congregate, come to this place, and that a word may be given to people. I know this has to be clear to you, right, so far? And so this is really important that people understand this, that you make sure that you support the house of God so that word can be given. This is kingdom system way. World system goes and says, you giving your money down there at that church. It's, it's awesome that people would say something so, I would say, ridiculous. Why? Because you giving your money down there at that Target. You giving your money down there at that Walmart. You giving your money down there. People will stand in line, as they're doing now, to try to get a, a, a resource such as gas. When people won't stand in line anymore to get a source of God. So we know how to do it, but we're just, we, we are derailed in our thinking on what we're doing, right? And so again, God says, for we walk by faith, not by sight, and uh, living our lives in a manner, living our lives in a manner, living our lives in a manner consistent with our confident belief in God's promises. So faith doesn't work if you don't know what his promises are and then you stay confident in the belief of those promises. Why does it say that? Because it will look like it's not going to work out. It will look like it's not going to pan out. It will look like it's not going your way. Now, it will look like it, but it won't turn out to be that way. You win. Do you got it? You need to understand you win. So revelation of giving depends on our sight you will have a hard time giving the way God says to give if, you, if you're not able to see right. Ephesians 1 and 18 says this in the voice version. It says, open the eyes of their hearts and let the light of your truth flood in. Open the eyes of their what? Hearts. I, when I make statements, I never make a statement without the word of God backing it up. And you need to be careful of that because there's a lot of people that make statements but you need the word of God to back it up. It says, open the eyes of their heart. Your eyes, you can see through your heart. Here's a prayer, open, and, and this is something you can pray. Let's do it right now. Father, open the eyes of my heart, Lord, that I'm able to see. It's one of my personal favorite prayers. God, this is my prayer, how I pray. God, help me to see what I can't see. Help me to hear, Father, what I can't hear. I pray that at least, I know every week, but even a few times in a week, because I need to hear, I get chills thinking about it, because that when I get into a tough spot or a situation, I don't know what to do because I'm walking by faith, remember, and I don't see it out of my natural eye, but I'm trying to see in my spiritual eye, in my heart's eyes, open my eye, God, let the light of your truth flood in, because watch this, if I can get your truth, I don't care what the facts say. Because the facts can change. And what's going to change the facts is the truth of God. So I need to stay rooted in the truth of God that I may change my current facts. Because a fact can change. But the truth of God remains the same. Revelation of giving depends on our sight. So if God says to do like the, the, the woman with the two mites and give all you have, you need to be giving all you have if God says that. Why? Because God has something for you um, right down the road that is going to be much greater than what was in your hand. The Bible says she gave two mites, very little, but it was a lot to her because it was all she had. God says this. Jesus said she gave more than everyone else because she gave out of the little that she had, which was a lot when everyone else gave out of the abundance that they have. They gave to the level where they were still yet comfortable. She gave to the place where she was uncomfortable, which set her up for a miracle. It's amazing. People want the miracle, but they don't want to create a miracle. And so this is where she's like, I'm creating a miracle right now. That something powerful is about to happen. Do you know you can create a miracle right now? Maybe you're listening to me right now and you said, well, didn't we already give? You can still go and give now to say, I want to create a miracle seed. Amen. I want to give something to where I feel it. 
I want to give something to where it makes me uncomfortable. Now, you don't do this and keep listening. If you're not all the way there yet, you don't do this based upon your emotions. You do this based upon where you see in your heart. If you need some more word, I got it for you. Remember this point uh, that my alliteration for S revelation of giving depends on our sight. So then if you're able to see from your heart in the way that you're supposed to and you get revelation of that, then you need to go ahead and do just that. If you can't see, then I would I would stand down and I would hold to where you are because you're only seeing based upon what's in your bank account. I praise God that I see beyond my bank account. And because I do, I live beyond just what my bank account says. And to be quite honest with you, it aids in my bank account when I live in the kingdom way. God finds a way to put in to my life just by me trusting him. So you guys just heard pastor speaking on the first point of sight. And one thing that I definitely uh, got from that, one thing that really captured my attention was the story of when he was explaining how basically Jesus was watching everyone give up their tithes and of their offerings and everybody was just giving the amounts that everyone was giving. But there was this lady who came up and she gave all that she had. Um, it was not much. It was very little, but she gave all of what she had. Of course, we have this saying in our church, giving is worship. And so worship is who you are. And so when this lady came and she gave all of what she had, it was equivalent to giving all of who she is to Jesus. And so Jesus acknowledged her. Jesus acknowledged that and ended up blessing her with such a miracle, a miracle that she couldn't even believe. Um, but what she did, she came with expectation. And so that is to say, um, when you go and you give of your tithes and of your offerings and you're obedient to the word of God, God will end up blessing you with such a miracle that you can't even imagine it. Whether you want a promotion at your job, whether you want an increase in finances, increase, an increase in relationship, an increase in friendships, what have you, sow a seed into that so that way you can be in expectation for something. So get ready to receive your blessing. So next, we are going into this next point um, that pastor is getting ready to discuss. He's about to talk about spirit. So let's go ahead and let's dive right on into this. I want you guys to really tune in because this is about to be some good stuff. So let's go ahead and go on into spirit. Check this out. The action of giving tithes and offerings and receiving the benefit from, from it is only revealed through the Spirit of God. Because when things get tough like it did for Abraham, you need to hear from your spirit that I'm still supposed to give. See, when you have a lot, people give when they have a lot because it's no problem. But when they and it goes down and you're getting tested in your finances, then all of a sudden people say that I can't afford not to give. And again, I can't afford to give. And again, I'm not throwing any rocks because if you can't see, you just can't see. I can't see any other way except making sure I support the kingdom. Amen. Now, let's look at some scripture before we go forward. In Matthew chapter 13, in the New Living Translation, it says, anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. Remember what I said? That anyone with ears, and we talk about sight, and we're talking about hearing. Here it is right here. Anyone with ears to hear, which is to say that you can also have ears that don't hear. So, meaning, this is specifically talking about ears of your heart. That means in your heart, you can hear. In your heart, you can see. Now, do you see that? Again, when you're listening to the man or woman of God, you need to always make sure that you are in the word, in the scripture, because that's what yields the power. Not someone just coming up screaming at you and making you feel good for a couple of days. No, you need the word to combat the events that are going on outside here in these streets. Amen. It goes on to say in verse 10, his disciples came and asked him, why do you use parables when you talk to the people? I know I talk to people, not often now, but people who say, pastor, you just need to tell me straight up. No, you can, no, 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 no. As that movie say, you cannot handle the truth. Amen. You think you can. I just want to just give it to me straight up. No, no. Jesus says this. He replied, you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. Did you get that? So everything I just said, now you see is coming from scripture. 
you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven, which means there are secrets in the kingdom of heaven. Now, he's not trying to hold it back from you. It's based upon the level that you can hear. It's based upon the level of your seeing. It's only a secret because you refuse to receive hearing and seeing where God has placed it in your heart. Why? Because you need to receive Christ in your heart. And that's the only way that you're going to be able to hear and see. But he says for you, you have been permitted. You've been permitted to gain access to the kingdom of heaven, these secrets. And he says, but others are not. It's not because anyone is, you know, better than or worse than. It's just simply of what you receive. It comes down to what you receive every day. I personally receive the power of the living God living on the inside of me. Every day I receive the power of the living God living on the inside of me. Why? I need it. I need a refresher. I need a reminder so I don't veer off and start acting natural like most people do. I want to know the secrets. I want to know what I should do. And I'm telling you, and I could give, I don't have time, but I can give so many tes uh, testimonies on how that works. It says, but others are not. And listen, I first lady said this last week, I've been on the side where I couldn't hear and I couldn't see. And now I'm on the side where I can hear and I can see. And let me tell you this, I still have um, trouble sometimes hearing and seeing some things. And that's why I get up every day so I can try to hear and see the at, at the at the optimum level of where I am today. But I thank God I'm not blind. I had a song say I once was blind, but now I see. And I used to be blind. I used to be in a position to where I could not, I, I didn't know. And I, I would look back in my life. Sometimes I do it today and say, what was I thinking about? Yes, I was going to church. Yes, I was trying to do my best. Yes, I was a good person. But that doesn't have anything to do with anything. If you don't receive what Jesus has given us, which is the spirit of the living God on the inside, if you don't receive God's spirit, you won't have the ability. Your heart is not equipped to be able to hear and see kingdom ideas, kingdom flow. You, you, you're not going to be able to see that. Now, if you want to see that, just hang in here with me. You want to be in that number? Hang in here with me. It goes on to say to those who listen to my teaching. Here it is. I'm helping you now to those who listen to my teaching. More understanding will be given. Do you see something is happening? So then first something has been given, teaching has been given, and then he said what's going to come from that is more understanding. So if you're sitting there now, and if you're not doing like my son-in-law said, that you're taking a seat, that you're paying attention and, and all of that, then guess what? You are jeopardizing your future because more is in your future if you could just sit down and grab a hold of this teaching. Now, look, I'm as about as relaxed as I can be. I feel I feel great. I feel that the spirit of God is using me. I came here purposely for you. I feel like I'm filled with the power of the living God. I feel that the words that are coming out of my mouth are filled with power packed words that can move and shake your life to another existence. If you could get a hold of the teaching, this is the type of teaching. And I did it on purpose that you can hear over and over and over again. I've given you, you know, word. I've given you the, the precepts of it. I've given you context of it. You have everything. But if you take the word and you let the word, which is seed drop to the ground, then you won't get the harvest that you're looking for. It says, if you listen to my teaching, more understanding will be given. And it says, and they will have, listen, an abundance of knowledge. They will have an abundance of knowledge. We're not talking about money yet. We're not talking about a big house yet. We're not talking about, you know, a car yet because everybody wants, I want a brand new car. Look at God. I want a brand new house. It doesn't start there. See, God says, I want to make sure you have knowledge first. That's why he walked with Abraham for years before he gave him the thing that he really wanted in his son, Isaac. You see, he made the mistake of saying, I heard God, had a relationship with God, made a mistake with Ishmael trying to help God. He and his wife did that. But it took them years later to understand. No, because, see, he didn't understand in his Ishmael days how to act in his Isaac days. He came with Isaac. So when he knew, see, God already knew I'm going to ask him for what I'm going to bless him with. 
and I need him to be, I need him to understand and have knowledge of who I am so he doesn't go off and try to do something and call it, say it's me that's doing it. No, see, you want, you want a house? Gain knowledge. What? Kingdom knowledge. You want a car? Then gain knowledge. You want a relationship? Gain knowledge. See, when you do that, then in that, God will give directions because in those things you're going to want or, you know, going to deal with, there will be persecution. There will be problems. There will be issues. There will be whatever in it. So, as you guys just heard in um, the second point that Pastor just talked about, was spirit. And so, of course, he's coming from Matthew 13. And one of the things that it said was you are permitted to understand the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. And one thing that I really appreciate um, what Pastor said was it's not that it's a secret. It's just more so it's a secret because you haven't yet um, received it in your heart. You haven't yet opened up the ears of your heart to hear and to receive the secrets. And so it's not much more of a secret. It's just that you have to be willing to open yourself up to receive Christ in your heart so that way you can go and you can receive the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. It's almost like this. If you go to the bank and you get a credit card or they ended up sending you a credit card and you use that credit card without um, activating it first, your card is always going to be declined because in order for you to receive the benefits, you have to go and activate the card. The same thing um, with the Spirit of God. In order for you to receive the benefits, you have to go and activate your spirit by receiving Christ. He is the one who is going to give you Holy Spirit. And so you have to activate it. You have to receive his spirit so that way you can go and receive the secrets that are in the kingdom of heaven for you guys. Um, and so, of course, now next, we are getting ready to dive into our final point. So I want you guys to pay close attention because we are getting really good. So pay attention to this, and I'll see you guys in a second. Your future comes from the roots of seeds that you sow. Your future comes from the roots of seeds that you sow. In the book of Genesis, it says, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest. This is cold and heat, winter and summer, day and night. And it says, it shall not cease. This is a, a powerful um, principle that you must still understand. It goes right back again of tithing. Tithing is out. No, night and day ain't out. Cold and heat ain't out. Winter and summer ain't out. Y'all love singing about your summer songs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it ain't out. I said it shall not cease. It's not something we sit around and deliberate on. It just is. Amen. It just is. Just like uh, a tithe is just that's even when he talked about it in Malachi. He was like, what's wrong with y'all? Y'all know better than this. But that was to say, just bring forth your tenth and an offering. Right. We're now like, for me and my wife, I understand we give 42% of our income. Why? Because we give in grace. I don't bring forth a quote unquote tithe. No, I'm doing as uh, it's an it's a pleasure to be able to give to the kingdom. Oh, my wife just said it's a joy. And yes, it is. As opposed to when I was making all that money and I was trying to keep it so I can pay down my bills. Have you ever noticed how you do that and then another bill come up you never knew you was going to have? Yes, like oh, my God. My voice is like the canker worm. I'm telling you, this is good living. And, you know, there's things I have bills now. And if I just stop paying my tithes, I could pay that. But then some, see, I wouldn't, I don't, I, I don't have a mind for that. I, that, that sounds just, it sounds blasphemy. Like that sounds, and again, I'm not throwing right. I'm just trying to tell you, this is not just something you do by law but this is something you do because you get to. It says that, so your future comes from roots, from the roots of seeds that you sow. Listen to that quote. My next scripture, um, Luke 8 and 11, it says, now the meaning of the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The seed is what? The word of God. And it says concerning eternal salvation. 
So now the seed, now we use seed with money a lot and you can use it with money, but I got to show you something here before we get out of here. So now the seed we see in Luke eight and 11, do they see that? Mm -hmm. They see that the seed is the what? The word of God. The seed is the word of God. We're still in the same parable. The seed is the word of God. And so it starts there. And so too often we start with money when we should be starting with the word of God. Because if you, um, if you have received the word of God, then you can receive what to do with the resources that you have. Come on, I got to go. John 1 and 3 says this, all things were made and came into existence through him and without him, not even one thing was made that has come into being. If you know this whole um, chapter here, this is talking about Jesus and the word being one. Jesus and the word. Then it goes in in verse 14 and says that the word was made flesh and that is Jesus and walked amongst us. How does it start? In the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. It culminates and it comes together and it shows us that Jesus is the word. We've been so fixed on. So see, when you go in that path into where I'm going, you go kingdom way. We've brought it world way to where we go. Even we into some churches, we've taken money as it is in the world and say, bring it to this kingdom, quote unquote, kingdom system. But we're teaching it as like in the worldly way, instead of coming down the lineage of the kingdom way. You see, it comes right back again to where Jesus says, pray like this, our father. When you give, that's who you give into. Who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. It, it, the kingdom has come. We're here. We're here to build it. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. What are they? They're always giving. They're giving praise in heaven, right? Give us this day our daily bread bread synonymous with the word. See, if you see all of these things, it's still yet praying. It, there's a lineage of this thing praying, which starts with our father. So we shouldn't start with you just going in your pocket and just giving to the church. We should start with you understanding that you have a father that has requested something from you. But when the enemy has come and messed up our societal um, givings of one another, meaning daddies are walking out of homes. So we don't know what it's like to have our father. Right. We have no idea even what that means. And so now you come up here telling me some dude I ain't ever seen named Jesus to give. I ain't doing that. Why? They can't see why? Because of the lack of listening to what God says to do from heaven to earth is not happening here on earth. Then that's a quick win for the enemy to blind people on what God is doing in the lives of people. Oh, first lady said, I want you to teach this and I'm, I'm doing my best. I'm trying to teach y'all this. And you got to understand because money only follows you. I'm not giving because I have a whole bunch of money like that to give. I'm not giving because I just, you know, I'm doing it because that's where my life is. That's where my wife's life is. This is where we are. I'm not giving because I just have more than enough to give like that. I'm giving because that's where my life is. Our father who is in heaven. My heavenly father asked me to do something. My natural father asked me to do something. I'm going to do it. My heavenly father asked me to do it. Got it done. He says this, all things were made and came into existence through him. So then money came into existence through him. All things were made, came into existence. So remember, Remember, while we on this earth, seed time and harvest time always going to be here, which means, OK, we see that the seed is the word of God. We see that the word is synonymous, is it the same as Jesus? And now we see also that we can now if we are connected and with Jesus, things that are not as we're supposed to live in faith can be as we walk with Christ. As we walk with Christ, there's some things that's going to happen that could be painful dealing with the blockages of our heart. But whatever we don't have, we can actually make it because it says nothing was made 
But if we go down the right, because we've always taught it, you give money, then it's just going to come right back to you just like that. Not if you ain't connected to Christ. See, we teach this and we do a disservice to the people because people think that that church is like Vegas. I'm a give. And then you wait like it's a bet that it's going to come back. You're supposed to be doing kingdom business. And when you do kingdom business, the kingdom dividends will come back to you. Yes. Yes. And when you do kingdom business, kingdom dividends will come right back to you. That is such an awesome, awesome word. I hope you guys enjoyed it just as much as I did. Please, if you have not yet, remember, share this with as many people as you can. We need to spread this word like it is wildfire. And now, since we are coming to our conclusion, like Pastor always says, we have a lot of word and no more time. So I just want to say to you guys, thank you guys so much for watching and have a blessed night.